Hello everyone, this is Incredible Fencing Podcast. For more information, you can visit my website, subscribe to my YouTube channel or Instagram page. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Incredible Fencing Podcast. My name is Taras, and today I invited uh, another guest who is also a fencing coach and who is working in Chicago, Illinois, is in United States. And my guest name is Edward Kaihatsu. He's been fencing pretty long time by himself, and he was attending many different fencing competitions in United States and abroad. So he's got a lot, a lot of experience as an athlete. Also, Edward is is a fencing coach, so he is coaching many young people and many adults. And also his mentor and he helps fencing students and many people who are young and who wants to come to US. So he helps them to apply to US universities as a part of their fencing program. So if you have any plans to visit US as a student and you want to study in US, maybe you can contact Edward. I'm gonna tell his email at the end of this episode and you can also find him in internet pretty easy I think you can just google him you can find him in Facebook and many social media so I think it's very easy in these modern times all right so our conversation will be pretty long but if you want to listen just some part of our conversation you can check the description uh, where I'm gonna put some time tags with uh, some uh, key points we're gonna talk so you can start from the middle for example and listen just to part of this episode but I think if you listen the whole episode is gonna be a more complete right so Hopefully, it's going to be interesting and useful for everybody who is listening. All right, so here is our conversation with Ed Kaihatsu. Hi, Ed. How you been in uh, Chicago? Good, good. Just uh, got buried in snow, but uh, otherwise okay. But uh, do you like snow? I think it's it's very nice. I don't... It's clean, it's fresh, it's fluffy, and it's it's very quiet when it's a lot of snow for some reason. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I like you send me some pictures. I I really like it. I miss uh, <laughs> I miss this weather in Shanghai because not really often uh, you can see the snow uh, Shanghai. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, thank you for agreeing uh, to participate in the podcast. It's, well, thank you for having me. This is pretty cool. I was I was thinking uh, who is gonna be uh, the wh- whom I can invite for the next episode because I just uh, basically it's not I started it recently it's only one month because uh, I decided to do something uh, new like for the for the fencing for some maybe some fencers fencing parents anybody who can listen that's a great idea it's, you know it's, it's helpful it's constructive. Yeah. something to do yeah um so i sent you already some uh, questions like in general it's like not a questions it's gonna be like uh maybe key points like where we, we can talk about them and uh uh-huh. yeah maybe you tell I, I i'm pretty sure you can tell many things uh, about fencing in generally and uh, uh what you do and Sure. Yes. Yeah, what do you like to talk about? Just talk, and uh, I think it's gonna be interesting. Okay. Great. Sounds okay. good. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, how? Uh, basically, I ask. Uh, this is very, uh, I think, the fundamental question. How people start uh, fencing? Like when they? How did they find? Uh, how did you basically find fencing club? Or how did you uh, find out fencing is gonna be your sport in your life? Before I found fencing, I was doing kendo, which is uh, Japanese sword fighting, for about maybe two or three years. And okay. I was before high school. Uh, in before I went into uh, ninth grade, 
my friend, my neighbor, who is、uh, one year ahead of me, he said、uh, I should go out for a sport my first year of high school. Otherwise, I'll be behind. So I saw our high school happen to have fencing team, and、mm-hmm. I thought, oh, kendo fencing is the same thing, but of course it's not.、Uh, yeah, technique wise, nothing is the same, but philosophically, it's exactly the same. So.、Um, I went out for the fencing team, and I can give you the exact date because I remember it was November first, nineteen seventy-four. So I've been fencing a long time. Yes, but it's been pretty, pretty long time ago, yeah. But but you still remember it, <laughs> yeah. It's. I, think... I remember the very first day. Yes. Okay.、Um, it's. I think because of the kendo, it helped me、um, be successful at fencing early on、uh, because I've already done.、Uh, One-on-one sport. It、okay. helped me to be, you know, aggressive and take risks and basically not be afraid to try. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I. I also. I really like also like this uh, sort uh, sort related、uh, sports like kendo and some.、Mm. Yeah. I. I also like historical fencing. Like in general, I like how it looks like. So I、mm. think it's、yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. yeah. That is pretty cool. I think、uh, when you're doing、uh, sport like fencing, it's so easy to get other people fascinated about it because a lot of people have some have heard of it. Everyone's heard of it, but、yeah. no one's really ever done it. So,、okay. uh, yeah, but for the for the like for the、uh, for the people, in majority of people, they don't really、uh, maybe they see it, but they don't understand sometimes. What exactly happening, right? So exact. That's, I think, that's very、uh, true. Yeah, it's our mission as well to share some knowledge, right, about fencing. What's happening、right. on the fencing?、Um, okay, so basically, kendo. I I think kendo is more. It looks like a more like saber, right? Because you need to cut usually. Right. You need to cut your opponent. Yes. Right. In kendo, you only have three targets. It's the head, the forearm. And the torso. So,、um, okay. So you、Sorry. you were doing kendo, and then you decided to do fencing, uh, uh-huh. which is、uh, basically also like more modern way to do、uh, fencing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah,、uh, they're both martial arts. So. Okay. So, what's inspired inspired you to、uh, to do fencing like for the rest of your life? You almost entire of your life you do fencing. What's the most Inspirational thing you found in this sport. Well, it's it's a constant evolution of solving problems, which I love to solve problems and you know riddles and puzzles and things like that. Except I get to do it in my head and in my body, and then to someone else. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So I find that very very satisfying. And、um, I I thought this sport was so great. By the time I was a junior in high school, third year. I knew I wanted to be fencing coach. I knew I wanted to continue to compete and train、mm-hmm. and get get everybody involved in it as as many people as I could. Okay. And so,、uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's just such a great sport, and the one of the big、uh, advantages of fencing is that you don't have to be seven foot tall or throw a hundred miles an hour or, or run a. Six point four hundred yard dash. Yeah, you can be many shapes and sizes, and heights and body types, and still be successful. Yeah, so basically, fencing is a accessible sport for everybody. Everybody can do fencing. Right. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think、uh, fencing is also like, like, it, it, somebody call it、uh, like a, a physical chess, right? Because when you are on the strip. And、uh, when you when you fence and you need to decide what's gonna be your next move, right? So you have to、right. have many 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 choices and many decisions when you're fencing. Right. right. You always you always have to think ahead and、uh, try to be one step ahead of your opponent. Like like you like you said in chess, you do a move, but you know they're going to do something about it, and you have to anticipate what they're going to do as well. Yeah, yeah. I、uh, I also like. You not you don't need just just to be smart, yeah. You need to、uh-huh. kind of be out, you need out outwit your opponent, right? So you need to understand、Correct. your opponent also wants to win, and 
you need to predict his actions, right? Right. Anticipate uh, counteractions and uh, risk rewards. <laughs> yeah. But and, and that's all that's on the fly, you know, while you're out there doing it. And so you know, like Saber, you have to kind of plan ahead and then change as you need to. Foil you and Epi, you can kind of evolve your plan while you're in action. This is because the Saber uh, is much faster, right? Yes, there's very little time to kind of figure things out on the fly in Saber. Less time. You can, but it's it's very tricky. Much much more difficult in Saber than Foil and Epi. Yeah, I think Saber is also more like your reflexes, right? So you work out some reflexes. Like you don't have a time to think. You just you just have your reflexes, especially when you, for example, when your opponent suddenly try to press you yeah so you need to just react, react. okay yeah okay. it was very it was good point about saber <laughs> um okay so moving uh moving forward to the next next key point of our uh, conversation and so uh you also you now basically you are fencer you are fencing coach you are a mentor so you mentor in Uh, and other people to improve their uh, all their abilities right so basically you do like many many things which is kind of related to each other but from the other hand they are quite different and uh, right. also you are uh, uh, your actor right yeah. sometimes uh, you uh, need to do some uh, I don't know how, how 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 to say it like prof- like your, prof- your professional uh, Activity. When you're an actor, you need to train. You need to train your vocal. You need to train uh, how to talk properly. You need to... So how how basically all these activities you do? How they help each other? Oh. Yeah. How you apply them? Like for example, how you apply fencing for your actoring activities? From from the other hand, how you apply your actoring skills on the fencing piece? That's that's actually an interesting interesting question because I never realized how much how similar acting was to competing. Um, in acting, we have rehearsals, and fencing we have practice. In mm-hmm. acting, we have performance, and in fencing we have tournaments. Yeah. And um, in ta- in training for acting classes, uh, most of the other people in the classes were not competitive athletes. So the the mental preparation things that we did for acting class, I've been doing for years to prepare for tournaments. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't really a, a thing for uh, a big revelation to how to prepare for uh, for even for, for performing in class. It's like warming up. And you warm up for practice every day. You warm up for tournaments every tournament. And we warm up for class every day in acting, and people weren't used to that. So I felt that I had a big advantage in learning faster because I got to kind of go past that step. Yeah. Um, it also teaches me how to control myself, uh, my emotions and what emotions I want to show and what emotions I don't want to show, whether mm-hmm. it's to, to my opponent. I don't want to tell them I'm angry or, or, or uh, afraid or, or doubt, have doubt. I can't show that to my opponent that's, gives them too much advantage and acting has taught me to channel what I want to expose and what I want to keep um, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the and I didn't realize it was until one of the acting coaches said it was like playing sports and she made all these uh, correlations between the two and I found that wow this is acting is a sport I mean the way you look at it generally it is you 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 train, you prepare, you warm up, you perform, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that sounds that sounds like fencing. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I think yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I haven't uh, haven't been an actor yet. Maybe I'm gonna try it uh, at some point. Taking I think your everybody should try it. Uh, yeah, taking your exam, but I think it's also you know, it's a uh, very like competitive uh, thing yeah so many people uh, maybe they dream to be an actor yeah so sometimes it's yes. uh, like you have to you also have to have some maybe talent right so when you are an actor 
sometimes you need to work it out, but I think sometimes you need to have part of the talent, right? So your natural uh, ability to smile, right? To speak and to show your uh, gestures, show your face to the camera, right? Yeah, I think also, like in fencing, your talent can be trained. If mm -hmm. you have training, you will learn how to smile and present yourself and speak and... Um, You, you trained to be an actor just like you trained to be a fencer. Um, the, the process of uh, preparing for uh, a, a shoot or a tournament uh, is really, it's just plain hard work on both sides. There's no way to just, somebody says, oh, I'm a natural, you know, up to a point. Mm -hmm. And that is an advantage. But after that, you need training. And... Uh, more guidance than actual physical training so i find that um acting and fencing has helped my acting which i of course started later in life uh, and i think if it can work for acting it can work for a lot of other areas and i sent you a video about the applications of preparing yeah. for events yeah and you know whether whether it's the uh in the classroom or doing a presentation or in the courtroom or operating room or whatever room uh, profession they end up taking, they'll know how to emotionally and uh, mentally prepare to do the thing that they need to do because they've done it in tournaments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, in generally uh, talking about tournaments, mm -hmm. so uh, you as athlete, I, I just checked the United States uh, association of fencing or like United States Fencing Association, right? So uh, I check yes. uh, your page. So there is uh, oh. a lot of your results uh, shown. Uh, so you were participating in a uh, few uh, world championships, right? And, yeah, uh, uh, veterans. Yeah. And, and uh, actually, yeah, senior. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> okay, okay. But uh, maybe it's like it's on the second page because I was watching on the first page. So it's, it's quite a lot of... Uh, An American uh, championship, some uh, world championship. So the best, uh, uh, the highest place uh, on the world, uh, it was uh, six, sixth place, right? So we got to oh. top eight. So how you, oh. what you can say about this result? Are you uh, basically? I think it's uh, it's quite good because you got to the top eight. It's, it's I think it's very good to be number six in the world. In in anything, I think if you're number six in the world, it's already nice thing, right? Uh, uh, but maybe yeah. from another hand, it was a bit uh, uh, disappointing because you could do better, right? Uh, what do you yes. think about your <laughs> particular this particular competition? Well, you are you are exactly right on on my feelings. At the time, I was angry because I knew I could beat that guy. Mm -hmm. And he was good. He was very smart. And, and he ended up, I think he took second place in, in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So he continued to win after me. But I'm like, actually, if I look at him, I was like, oh, man, I could beat that guy. There's just, if I had held my head together longer and made a couple of changes, it would have been me up there instead of him. But afterwards, you know, you look back and you say, okay, well, sixth place, you know. That's my highest result, and uh, it's pretty good, and I should be... And I, I was happy with it, but it took a while <laughs> for yeah, me to course. realize it. Uh, to say, okay, that was okay, instead of, dang it, I wish I had done this or done that. And, but, uh, uh, you know, I, all due respect to my opponent, he was, he was very... He just was smarter than me in the moment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but... Still, I'm pretty pretty satisfied, you know. Um, hopefully, do better next time. So yeah, so I think uh, if you can uh, get the time machine, so you could uh, get back to that bout, right? And you could make uh -huh. some changes, yeah, which could help you to yes. win that point. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, can you uh, like uh, remember what's what was your favorite? What was your favorite competition, career, and uh, what the, what you can like? What what was the brightest memory from your career as athlete? Um. Wow. I don't know. I really every time I do well in tournament is always my favorite one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it, it, it's gratifying 
not just because I, I, you know, the winning isn't as well. It's rewarding, but to me, it's the fencing well. It's to me the executing my ideas the way I pictured it. That's my that's my gratification. Uh, the medal is nice. It's great, but if I fence well, I find that the mo- the best tournament. Sometimes. My result isn't that great, but I feel like I fenced well, and sometimes people just fence better than you on any given day. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you run into somebody that's just hard, but um, I think overcoming the difficult fencers, because sometimes they're not always very good, but they're just hard to fence. Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, that's my my gratification. That's how I get my uh, satisfaction out of competition is my performance. Uh, and then there's the result, whatever it ends up being, which is a very close second. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still my my how I how I perform matters to me. So basically, you consider the victory uh, from another way, like from the point of view of your uh, fencing quality, right? Yes. So if you yeah. show good quality of fencing, uh, you are happy already, right? Yes. Okay. So yes. uh, the result is kind of side effect. Yeah. So if you win, it's gonna be could be nice bonus to your good fencing at the competition, right? Yeah. I feel like if if you fence well, the medals will come, and you just have to keep focusing on fencing well and not getting a medal. I think this is a very good thing uh, to tell to the to students. Maybe uh, uh-huh. sometimes they feel some some stress, some pressure before competition, right? So I think uh-huh. if if you focus on your on your fencing, not not on the goal, is your goal is not to win, your goal is to fence, right? So it can remove yes. some stress, right? You can calm down and right. uh, focus all your strengths to the good fencing, doing the right actions, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Because most of most of your good performance is within your control, so you can control whether you panic or you're afraid or you're uh, uh, hungry. You mm-hmm. know, you're tired. You know, it's like, hey, you're tired. I can. Sorry. So, so what? You have to fence. It's like, yeah, I'm hungry. It's like, oh, sorry, you have to fence now. Okay. So, uh, it's it's within your control how you can perform. And when you do it and, it and do it well, it's very satisfying. Yeah. Okay. So the next question, basically, I'm, I'm a bit messed up with questions because I sent you some questions. So I just <laughs> <laughs> I skipped one, and I I just find out I skipped it. <laughs> But don't don't worry. We just we just talk. Yeah. Don't worry about this. Yeah. 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 No, uh, we just somewhere along the line, it'll probably work itself into our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, As I said before, like two two fencers, every time can find a way, kind of find a find a thing to talk about, right? So it's like uh, you d- yes, absolutely. <laughs> you don't know where a conversation can take us. Who knows? Right. All right. So now, uh, now you're doing uh, basically in Chicago. You are doing uh, you are helping uh, some students, some fencers from mm-hmm. the from mm-hmm. from the other countries. Uh, you help them to uh, apply for their U.S. universities, right? Yes. Uh, yes, I got it correctly. So you help them, and uh, yeah. So uh, can you tell something about this, like what the sure. what they what they need to do to do uh, to apply, and when they need to start? Do they need to start like very early when they are in the junior school, for example, or they need to uh, wait until the last year and? Uh, What the first steps and first requirements for the applying? Okay. Um, first, uh, I want to take a step back and talk about uh, who I'm yeah. uh, trying to help. Because originally, I, w- I was going to do this for U.S. Ki- kids in the U.S. Uh, to help them, shepherd them through mm-hmm. uh, how how to get recruited and who to talk to and how to, to prepare. Okay. But for two years, for two years, I went around national tournaments and I talked to coaches and I look at uh, kids and and I see that uh, they I don't know if they really need my help because they have access to coaches more than kids who live overseas. Mm-hmm. And they can take a weekend to go visit a campus. They see the coaches at national tournaments five, six times a year. So um, 
that's I felt like hmm, maybe American kids don't need my help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But so then I I, I look to help uh, kids who are living abroad, and some of the kids living abroad are U.S. citizens. They just live somewhere else, yeah. and some of them are are not. And I thought, okay, this these are the kinds of people who really uh, don't have access and don't have uh, information readily available to them. And so I started helping them um, when I was in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's actually since COVID and there's no tournaments and there's no uh, on-campus visits. Uh, now everybody seems to be like in the same boat that they are isolated from being able to access coaches and, and campuses. So I've been helping more American kids too. But um, one of the things that most people don't know is that uh, once you enter high school yeah. is when you could can start. You can start looking at uh, fencing colleges. It's a really young age to determine, you know, what your major is going to be, what you're going to, uh, where you're going to go to school. But the process can just lay down some groundwork where you don't have to make those decisions yet and uh, do some preparations on uh, setting up things that you only have to update instead of build once you get closer to junior year, Mm -hmm. sophomore, junior year. Um, And I help them put things together and register in the right places and how to present themselves. So Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a process that they can start tinkering about it in eighth grade. But by the time freshman year comes, they should start, um, Technically, according to NCA, they're considered prospects, mm-hmm. uh, but they're not rec- they're not recruitable until uh, their junior year, which means coaches can talk to them about, oh, this is the university you can learn this, or this is where we are in the country, and but they can't talk about their fencing programs yet until their junior year. Uh, um, okay, 11th, so eleventh grade. What what the junior year is like uh, exactly some age or is when you basically when you enter grade eight, right? So you can start. 11. Grade 11, okay. Grade, yeah, so when we enter um, September 1st of 11th grade, uh, no matter what age you are, uh, you can, coaches can start now to talk more about their programs and coming, you know, looking at their university. Uh, they can't sign anything yet, but they can start sort of say, yeah, I really like this school. You know, when I start applying in senior mm-hmm. year, this is going to be my number one choice. And, that number one choice can evolve from time to time, you know, because things change. Uh, the, the kids uh, decide maybe they want to study this instead of that. And, mm-hmm. uh, they, they, the coaches and universities have been changing a lot in the last few years. Uh, so that, that kind of is a deciding factor. Um, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process that never really is stable. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very mysterious to parents and to kids. Mm-hmm. And even to me sometimes, I don't know how things get done. But uh, one, thing, one thing that everybody is concerned about, including coaches, is that the admissions process is mm-hmm. very, very fickle. Okay. That means it's very unpredictable. So it all, so, all depends uh, on the situation, right? Sometimes the rules can change, yes. yeah? So you need to be prepared to, to adjust, right? Right. Rules can change with the NCAA, with the individual institution. Yeah. Coaches may have their own ideas. And uh, then the kids could change their minds. So it's an ongoing, ongoing evolution of problem solving, which is the perfect thing for me. Okay, so basically you help to solve all these problems. Right? Yeah. Potentially. I, I try to position them to mm-hmm. have the best position possible. And then we see what we can do. Okay. So uh, basically when they come to uh, 11th grade, so they can uh, start uh, searching for the college, right? For the future. And uh, so basically uh, they can contact you directly or... Or how how it how it's how it works usually. So, if if for example um, me, I'm 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 the student. Yeah, I'm at uh, grade uh-huh. eleven. So what I need to do to start my uh, start to look for some potential uh, colleges. Yeah. So what the what what I need to do to do this? Well, to 
to, to uh, one step back is that you can kids can start looking anytime. Okay. To college, it's just like that coaches can't recruit them until junior, until eleventh grade. So the kids could have an idea of who it is they want to talk to already by the time they're in eleventh grade. Okay. Um, but if they want to have uh, help and um, to increase their chances for admissions and in the university, fencing fencing can help do that. But I really am not interested in somebody who's fencing just to get into college. Mm -hmm. Can I go over my criteria for who, the ideal person I'd like to help? All right. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. the number one criteria, there's only five. Okay. Uh, the number one criteria is that they have to be, they have to love fencing and be committed to it. That's right. number one. The, uh, the most important. Number two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want uh, somebody to go into college and then quit because right. they're burnt out or they don't want to do it. So they have to really just intrinsically want to do it. Okay. Um, the second thing is that they have to be of excellent moral and ethical character. Um, fortunately, in the sport of fencing, that's not really a problem. Everybody is really pretty much good person and have good ethics. Mm -hmm. So uh, unlike unlike other sports, we we are very fortunate to have good quality people and families that are involved with fencing. All right. Um, they have to be it helps. They have to be a pretty good student, especially if they're coming from overseas. Um, that way, they have more choices. You mean they uh, have, they have to, to be. Know, they have to be like polite and uh, very calm. Or, uh, like, what, what what do you mean uh, under the moral and ethic uh, quality? They have to work. Okay. They have to work hard, as not be lazy. They have to help others, which is good leadership skills anyway. Okay. Uh, they have they have to be honest, you know, and and, and trustworthy, because mm -hmm. uh, you know you don't show up to practice one day and you don't tell the coach, coach is going to say, hey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, I had, a, I had a test and I had to study. You know, and they have to learn the process. You have to tell the coach you have a test. And the coaches, nine out of ten times, okay, go study for the test, come back tomorrow. You know, and because you are in college, you are mm -hmm. a student athlete in that in that order. Yeah. So you're, you, you can't do much if you're not keeping your grades up and keeping up with your schoolwork. So they're very accommodating to your academic uh, requirements. Okay, um, okay. So the, the, that comes into being the next one, being a good student. And by being a good student, that basically means having good habits, knowing when to study and when you can go out and have fun and, 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 you know, and being disciplined in accomplishing the objectives of your, of your academic uh, requirements. Yeah, so you have to be responsible uh, for your life and for your actions, right? So you need to do things in the right I, time, have a nice time management, I guess, right? And, uh, exactly. That's, yeah. that's an excellent uh, yeah, okay. time management. Uh, and that kind of goes into their ethics, you know, ethics and, and moral characters. You know, they know what to do and they do what they should be doing. Um, they have to know English. Because in some of the uh, foreign countries, English is mostly taught, but sometimes some are better at it than others. So they have to be proficient in English. Because coming to the U.S. and English isn't strong is mm -hmm. going to be a struggle. It's going to be a problem. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is they have to be financially capable of handling the tuition and all the expenses. Because foreign students get very little to no financial aid. And okay. uh, that's that's kind of a if they're speaking English and living in a foreign country, chances are they're they're pretty affluent families and they can manage the finances of going to college. Uh, but uh, it's just not easy to get financial aid or impossible to get financial aid mm -hmm. if you're a foreign foreign student. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, so basically, yeah. So even I, even if you are a very good fencer, so. It's still hard, right? Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that gets to my last point, is that none of my criteria say you have to be a top fencer. Although it's great if you are, um, and it certainly does help a lot. But to me, all these personal qualities ma ma matter um, equally or, or more, actually, more than being a top fencer, because sometimes top fencers uh, don't fulfill the rest of these criteria. Mm -hmm. And 
they they would they might struggle if they got to the U.S. Uh, English wise or training wise or uh, school wise. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, and I don't want to go have anybody go where they're not going to be successful, not going to just survive, but to thrive there because the coach is going to be like, Hey, Ed, what's this person you sent to me? You know, they, they're not coming to practice. They're not going to class. And, and that's a big problem for everyone. Okay. Yeah. So being a top, being a top fencer is great. And I hope everybody, you know, who, who works hard at it has their success in, in their, in their fencing. But I feel also if you're, have these qualities you have great potential to improve in college yeah that I makes sense so. okay so the, that's let's uh, run it again so the first is uh they should love fencing right the love fencing and, second, and be committed to it yeah be committed to fencing and number two is they have to have excellent moral and ethics ethic qualities right so hard yes. work leadership be honest honesty okay trustworthy trustworthy yes. okay and the uh, third criteria it was uh, financial stability right they have to be finan- uh third one was good student okay good student which means good good time management good study habits it's basically very related to second right so if you are a good student you also have a good moral and good yeah ethics. generally yeah so yeah a good student i agree i agree uh fourth Uh, was financial stability, right? Fourth, I'm sorry. Fourth was English. Ah, uh, yeah, good English. Yeah, I just put a, a good English to the also to, to the second. <laughs> okay, so good English, <laughs> good English, and good student, by uh, st- uh, financially stable, and excellent moral uh, qualities, and the most important, they should love, and they should be committed to fencing, right? Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. They should uh, love what they do and do what they love, right? <laughs> right. Okay. That's right. Because, you know, they, if somebody is fencing just to get into college and then they get into the school that they want, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that they may say, oh, my goal is accomplished and fencing has served its purpose and mm-hmm. I'm done with fencing, you know. But, you know, we, don't, we want somebody who wants to continue to fence because they love it. Yeah, no, of course. Because they have to, and and not certainly not to stop. Okay, so basically, uh, in U.S. Uh, in U.S. colleges, uh, when they fence for the university, right? Uh, mm-hmm. How many times per week usually they train? Well, each coach runs their own show. Uh, mm-hmm. By then, I mean they decide uh, how the, so to set the schedule. Uh, the NCAA has a maximum amount of any athletically related activities to 20 hours a week mm-hmm. maximum okay most fencing most fencing doesn't hit that um, when I was at Northwestern we got I think the most we had was 15 and that included mm-hmm. weight and conditioning outside of practice mm-hmm. regular training and outside private lessons and there's film and you know seminars the nutrition things like that mm-hmm. uh, that also count into it but those aren't on a regular basis uh, but uh, the uh, strength and conditioning and private lesson and group training mm-hmm. are the three main consumers of those uh, 15 hours 15 hours that's not uh, not uh, too much I think it's quite quite average number right um, some schools do less mm-hmm. some schools do do more uh it really depends on the coach's uh, ske- uh how he schedules uh training okay. Um, okay. but it's not actually the, the team's practice it's the individual's practice so mm. some some aren't required to go to practice every day because they switch foil one day save another epic another mm-hmm. and then together another so yeah it's, right. it really is all over the place as long as it's not more than 20 hours a week Okay, so basically, yeah, so it's uh, on the coach, yeah, coach, coach decides what he yeah. would like to do. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. makes sense. Um, all right, Ed, that was uh, pretty clear, I think, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's going to be uh, very interesting, very interesting for the listeners who would like to go to yes, maybe, maybe it's going to be some... St- um, okay, so sure. you were working... Uh, uh, basically uh, uh, in Shanghai uh, so we were working uh-huh. in Shanghai at, uh, at a fencing club uh, it was uh, about one year right so you were 
Yeah, you just came, under a year. Yeah, you came in 2015 and then you left it uh, one year later. So, yeah. and uh, when I came to China, actually, uh, I met many people who also know, know you. And uh, so basically, I heard your name many times, but uh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't really cont contact you because uh, yeah because you were already in US. Um, okay, so uh -huh. what you can uh, say about uh, fencing in China and uh, how you can compare it to American fencing and uh, uh, do you have some feeling like Ch uh, Chinese uh, fencing development is going towards like uh, American system or they or it's still uh, like different because uh, in china is kind of two uh, uh two ways to grow yeah some some people go to sports school and they do it very professionally almost every day they train hard and some people they kind of uh amateur but sometimes some people also quite strong yeah so it's kind of yes. two branches of the fencing in china so uh, how you can yes. compare chinese uh fencing with american um, like, well, like you said, there's like two different fencing worlds in the same country. Uh, the private clubs, uh, well, at Sika, the club we were both at at different yeah. times, um, I looked at the schedule for training and they have, you know, the group classes and the private lessons and who's giving what lesson and all that. But mm -hmm. there was no, no allocated time for free fencing, open bouting. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, when, when is the open bouting? And they all look at me like, what is that? And I said, that's when people come in and they just do, they can take lesson maybe also, but they just do free fencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't part of the schedule. And I finally got them to do it on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, and I said, open bouting is for anybody from any club. We want anybody from any club who wants to come to fence. And there was like I got a lot of resistance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, from from administration saying that they did not want other outsiders to come to our bouting. And I'm like, why? We learned from them. It's just, well, they're gonna. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We don't have any secret moves or something that we don't show anybody or <laughs> yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah. But they felt like it was very uh, secular. It's it's us and them. Mm -hmm. And I felt no, we could we learn from each other, and maybe we have club match. You yeah, know, just for fun, you know, but uh, they weren't very interested in that. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the open bounding was missing in a lot of private clubs. And I think U.S. clubs all have open bounding. Mm -hmm. And during open bounding is private lessons. They just take them out and the coach will get a lesson. And then they go back into bounding and takes another student. And then they also have footwork, usually in, uh, group classes as well. Uh, so it's kind of opposite of the structure of uh, the Chinese clubs. Mm -hmm. It's almost only classes. And then there's the sports world, the sports school world, where they are professionals and their job is to study something sport related and train in the sport that they're in as as the as their major, basically, as their mm -hmm. study major. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wish I wish that the two worlds would have a have competitions that include both so they kind of meet each other in the middle right? <laughs> yes yes and then, and then mm -hmm. you see you know sometimes there's a private school fencer who is who's very strong and and can break into the final or even win uh, uh, a national tournament that was only open to sports kids before and I, I know I know that's probably very scary to the sports world because they don't want to think like they're doing a bad job but I also think it could inspire them to say, "Wow, you know, we should mm -hmm. we should make changes in our training because private clubs are usually foreign coaches." Yeah, and sports school is almost exclusively Chinese coaches. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so that's a big difference. And the size of competitions, the numbers are to me the Chinese tournament size is insane on American standards. Uh, for them to have, you know, 2,000 fencers in a, in a weekend mm -hmm. is a crazy number. But somehow they get it done and they're very efficient and they're very, uh, 
uh, what's the word? Yeah, yeah. They right. don't wait. They don't yeah. waste time, and somehow mm. they finish. And I'm like, how did that happen? And I was very mm. amazed <laughs> at how well they run tournaments. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, but isn't it crazy how big? <laughs> Big an event could be. Yeah, so you said the uh, you said it was two thousand. I remember uh, it was more than three thousand once. No. <laughs> yes, no, and that's was... like not uncommon. Everyone's like, "Yeah, we have three uh, thousand." I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, it's not a normal number." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like, yeah, we, they, we'd they be, can manage. We'd be going, yeah. we'd be going crazy in the U.S. So if there was a tournament with three thousand kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many people And usually just... come to uh, NAC? Well, NACU runs a huge number of events each weekend. So uh, each event may have anywhere from, I don't know, the older uh, veterans events probably have like maybe 15, 20 entries. Mm-hmm. And then the, the cadets and juniors could have 300. So, and, and that could happen in one weekend over three, usually three days, or sometimes four days. Uh, could be several thousand people, but... Uh, Lots and lots of small events mm-hmm. in China. I think I think the biggest event was Y10, right? Mm. Was that the biggest one or Y10? Uh, Y10 is like a Chinese fencing league uh, stop. Or... Yes, They, the Y10 had the biggest numbers, I thought. But mm-hmm. yeah, probably. And, yeah. yeah, and it seems to drop off dramatically once it gets to Y14 when the kids enter high school. It goes from like Y12 will have Y10 will have 3,000, the Y12 will have 2,000, yeah. and the mm-hmm. Y14 will have like 40. Yeah, somehow they get some, uh, they drop, maybe because they uh, do it too much, or maybe they have so a lot of academic pressure, right? So they need to drop fencing. Yeah. I think that's that's the number one reason is uh, parents and kids. Mm-hmm. I don't know what uh, Chinese academic... Uh, curriculums are like, but they say, oh yeah, there's too much mm-hmm. school to continue fencing, so a lot of them stop in high school, which is unfortunate because in the U.S. a lot of them start in high school mm-hmm. and yeah. start competing, competing nationally in high school, but when I started, it was high school was the beginning, and now it's eight years old is the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they start very early and finish early as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes... All right, so basically... Open bouting is a very important thing of fencing development. I mean, uh, experience exchange, I so. yeah, experience yeah, I exchange, so. and uh, just practice with many people. Yeah, it's very important. Right, variety, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, in China, much bigger number. But sometimes I, I must say, sometimes it's uh, a bit messy because uh, uh, they don't know. Uh, Basically, they know, but they don't start it on time in China very often. So uh-huh. there was many occasions we were waiting a lot. For example, a few hours, and some students had to warm up three, four times. You know, uh-huh. uh, so yeah. So I think when many people come into competition is a good thing. Uh, but from the other hand, it's kind of challenging for the organizers. We arrange everything. Also, they they are very uh, fluid with the competition dates. Mm-hmm. Like uh, one Anna, well, one of the the kids said, "Oh yeah, we we're gonna have a national tournament on this weekend," mm-hmm. and then they changed it like two weeks before the tournament. They said, "Oh, we're mm-hmm. gonna have it the, this weekend instead," yeah. and everybody just goes with it. I'm just like, "Wow, that yeah. doesn't have you have a date in the U.S. It's that's when it is. There's no changing mm-hmm. it really." Yeah, yeah, you have to be. Yeah, that's my one rule I develop. You need to be prepared for, for sudden changes. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah, okay. and yeah. it's it was something I wasn't used to, and I'd never heard of any national mm-hmm. tournament, maybe local one, but national changed the date, and I was okay. like, wow. Okay. So, do you miss Shanghai? Do you want to come back? Yeah, you know what? I do. I do miss Shanghai. Mm-hmm. I really. Uh, it was a very Uh, difficult time adjusting because of the culture is so different. Mm-hmm. But now that I know what it's like, I know what to uh, expect, and I don't feel it's going to be so uh, conflicting with what I'm used to because I know it's going to be different. And this is I know now how it's going to be different. So mm-hmm. if, when it is, it's not going to be so. What is going on? Yeah. So I I 
I do miss Shanghai, and I really met some wonderful people there. And the, the city is is beautiful, and it's full of I thought very nice people. I mean, everybody,、mm. whether they spoke English or not, I thought that they were all trying to be very nice and accommodating. I look Chinese, so people always expect、mm-hmm. me to. They, they think I'm Chinese, and then when I start speaking English, I can have the same conversation. It's like whoa,、mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> <Just> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they kind of every, yeah, okay. That was many occasions、uh, they speak Chinese with you, right? <laughs> yeah, at the beginning,、mm-hmm. yeah. and、uh, but I really appreciated how、uh, accommodating they were, and Chinese hospitality is wonderful,、mm-hmm. um, and uh, not just uh, families, but professionally. I mean, the professional hospitality at hotels and restaurants and things was really maybe it's just the places I went to because I was a foreigner, but it、mm-hmm. was really very accommodating and very friendly and very.、Uh, Uh, a lot of fun. It was it was very very comfortable to be there. Yeah, I think it's still a lot of fun now.、Uh, but of course, last year, for some reasons, we know which reasons. But、uh, it was difficult. But in generally now it's okay and、uh, everything is fine. So except、yeah. except everybody needs to wear mask, of course. But in general, it's coming back to normal slowly. I I hope.、Uh, yeah, hope so. How how about miss,、uh, how about US? Is it、uh, getting a bit better day by day? It is. It's improving a little bit, and it, it, I guess even if it stayed the same, I would、mm-hmm. consider that an improvement from the way it was going. But I believe it's actually declining、mm-hmm. uh, little by little, and that's that's a good sign.、Uh, vaccinations are been、uh, happening more often, and people are getting more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And not so scared about things, and so I think、uh, things are going in a good direction. And、mm-hmm. hopefully, they said by summer things might be much, much better. So they're gonna, but we see. They will try to vaccinate. It's supposed to be like seventy percent, yeah, at least, so people can get、uh, immune in general, right? From the seventy. Yeah, yeah. When they when they count the U.S. population, they also count children, which don't get vaccinated. So when they say seventy percent, that could be all the adults. I don't know how many. I don't know what the exact proportion is.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it's gonna be. It's gonna be okay. Or, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ed, I'm and, hoping so. Yeah. Okay. So、uh, the last、uh, question, like maybe, maybe you remember some funny occasion from the competitions or from the uh, training. Uh, mm. You can tell us. So we can. <laughs> Do you have any story,、wow. like funny story? <laughs> Um, I think one of the funniest things that I remember is that、uh, at a tournament that、uh, Seiko was holding,、mm-hmm. when there was priority,、uh, we do、uh, we actually have scoring machines that determines priority by flashing back and forth.、Mm-hmm. Some referees toss a coin, and some referees spin a pencil.、Mm-hmm. But in in China, I saw that the two fencers get together and they do rock paper scissors to determine priority,、oh. and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I thought that was. Oh that yeah, was, yeah. Actually, that was fun, you know. <laughs> I never seen this. The, I never seen. Maybe it's、oh. it's, it's like the some uh, uh, I don't know some very、uh, smart guy invented this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, the, you get the young kids doing、yeah. rock paper scissors, and they try to do rock paper, and then they wait until they see the other ones, and then they、uh, do their、uh, the、yeah. sign. I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys can't、uh. do it at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, but you in this way you can cheat cheat your opponent, right? You can, yeah, you can wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, like, you're, you're, it's very tricky, but no, you can't do it that way. Yeah.、Okay. So, and I thought, you know what? We should do that in the U.S.、Uh, At least you feel like you have some control over how it turns out, <laughs> even though you really don't. But it feels like you do. And,、mm-hmm. and yeah. we should do okay. Priority: rock, paper, scissors. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Edward.、Uh, thank you for this、uh, interview. I think it was amazing, and、uh, it was very nice to have thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. It's good to talk to you again. And, and thank you, by the way, for coming up to finding me at the World Championships in Wuxi, where we met face to face for the first time.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I, think, I appreciate that. I think you 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 said a lot of things. Is is interesting personally for me, but I think if somebody Is gonna listen. I'm gonna、uh, put. 
advertisement in many social media, in WeChat, in LinkedIn, Facebook. So hopefully many people can listen. Yeah. And also if uh, they have some questions, they can they can contact you uh, in Facebook. Right. So where, where, where is the best way to contact you? Um, I have an email address mm -hmm. that I can send to you <clears throat> that I use for uh, just the uh, fencing mentoring and coaching and things like that. I can send that to you. Okay. And, uh, well, uh, okay. So you send it to me, inform everybody. And uh, so who can, uh, who want to apply for US college need to contact you by email, right? And you mm -hmm. going to talk about all the details. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and see, you know, uh, if they haven't, you know, they think, oh, I, uh, there might be schools that they would be a good fit for that they never even uh -huh. heard of. And yeah. I, I believe that the, the, I think that there's a lot out there that just is so unknown. It's worth mm -hmm. at least asking about. All right, Ed. Uh, thank you very much again for everything. And uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Take it easy. We'll bye. Talk you to you too. Soon. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. All right, all right. I hope this conversation was interesting and useful for everybody who gets to the end, right? So if you have any questions to add, you can contact him by email. I'm gonna spell this email to you in case you cannot check it anywhere, yeah? So the email of Ed is ikaihatsu at ekmentoring.com I'm gonna spell it letter by letter it's e-k-a-i-h-a-t-s-u at e-k-m-e-n-t-o-r-i-n-g dot com alright so you can email to add directly and ask him any questions especially if your question is about applying to United States University and uh, if you have questions to me you also can send me message or leave your comments in description don't forget to subscribe for my youtube channel um, also we have Instagram page it's also incredible fencing and recently I made a telegram channel you also can subscribe I'm gonna upload there some news and of course, the Incredible Fencing Podcast website is incrediblefencing.blueberry.net or you can just Google Incredible Fencing and you can find it on the first page. All right, so I think it's time to say bye-bye and see you next week and have a nice day. You are listening to Incredible Fencing Podcast. For more information, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit my Instagram page or website.